One of the things I wondered about in my early days of playing with the phone was whether the telephone company ever used phone numbers beginning with the digits 1 or 0. Now in North America, all telephone numbers and area codes always began with the digit 2 through the digit 9, and 1 was used as a toll access code in some places, and 0 was used for operator calls. But back in 1970, you could dial a distant area code and then a seven-digit number beginning with one or zero. Frustratingly, I first thought of trying that when I was at summer camp and unable to get to a phone, so I had to wonder about it for three weeks before I finally got home to try it. When I did get to my Long Island home and tried, dialing an area code, followed by something beginning with one or zero, I found that everything I dialed in this way was being intercepted by an operator who became affectionately known as Edna. John, I'm incorrectly. Hang up and try again. Anything with a one or a zero in that position of the phone number would go to Edna, and because of that, I assumed that the phone company simply did not use those numbers. But that wasn't true. It turned out that the phone company was using numbers, beginning with one and zero, and only inside people, such as operators and test men, could dial them. Now, the network was arranged so that customers could not reach these things, but occasionally there would be little breaches that would allow customers to dial them without any special equipment. And this is a tape of some of those. Sir, what are you doing with the phone? Uh, nothing. Anyway, some Crossbar 5 offices, unlike the one I grew up in, would occasionally fail to block the 0 and 1 codes when dialed after an area code. Had I grown up in one of these crossbar 5s, I actually would have gotten something besides Don, I'm incorrectly. when I tried it, and I would have come to a very different conclusion about the 1 and 0 codes, correctly understanding that the phone company did in fact use them. For example, had I dialed 604, the area code for British Columbia, and then 112-1111, I would have ended up getting this recording. Indeed, that's an example of the sort of thing that operators dial and customers don't. 1121 in the Vancouver Step Tandem was the code for that recording, and you used to be able to get it by just dialing the area code for British Columbia, 604, 1121, and then three more digits, assuming you weren't calling from a line that... Sir, you are doing something with this phone. ...did that. However, what you just heard was recorded in 1976 after a routing change had been made. By then, Vancouver had a brand new 4A switch, and the step tandem was secondary. So to get that recording, you had to dial 604, the area code for British Columbia, then 059, the routing code for the old Vancouver step tandem, and then 1121. And that was a tape of Ben dialing it from the Yonkers Crossbar 5, an office that did allow ones and zeros to go through after area codes. Another nice feature of Yonkers, by the way, is that the Crossbar 5 had N1 carrier to its outgoing toll tandem, White Plains 1. Here's the N1 noise, and here's the long distance noise coming through the N1. Now, the Vancouver Step Tandem was where the famous 2111 conference was. Here's a tape of calling into the conference, unfortunately, at a time when nobody's on it but the background hum of that conference is famous in itself. So here's This hum is very familiar to many. Unfortunately, there are almost no tapes of talking on 2111, 
Here's one of them, which I'll mix right into now. This is a tape from July 1974, I believe. Okay, it's early morning, July 7th, about 3 in the morning, 3.15. And it's a Sunday morning. Uh, will be a Sunday morning. We are on Vancouver. Ben is uh, on with two lines. I'm on with one. We're recording from my end. And uh, Ben stacked a couple tandems on uh, on one side. More than a couple. More than a couple. What did you use to stack? Hey. <laughs> anyway, so he wants to record his echo. Am I being recorded? Yes, you are. Well, I stacked, I stacked up about nine tandems. And that is where the original cassette tape of that ran out. Not good luck on recording 2111, but hey, we have 052, and that's a classic. The sound quality of that conference was far better than what you hear there, because Ben's calling in on two lines, at least one of which is going through a tandem stack, and so that produces both echo and resonance and all the crappy sound associated with stacked tandems. The conference really did sound as good as 052. More calls to Vancouver Step later, none of which have people on them, unfortunately, but that hum will be heard again. Next, we'll use the routing code for Poughkeepsie to send a call that ends up on the International Gateway in White Plains. In this case, the White Plains 4E, because this tape is recorded in 1980 from Mamaroneck, New York, another crossbar 5 that allowed this particular thing to slip through. I'm going to dial 914-099-1821. The 914 dialed from Mamaroneck puts the call through White Plains tandem number 1. 099 sends the call to Poughkeepsie, and then Poughkeepsie knows the 182 code goes to the White Plains 4E, which will flash and give us the tone from the International Gateway. actually using the gateway, that tone would be broken by the MF sequence of the second stage, where the country code, area code, and local number would be sent. But all we did was reach the international gateway. We didn't actually send any international number. So it timed out to a reorder. Now, back when a 4A was handling the international White Plains gateway, instead of that reorder, we would have gotten this. I'm sorry, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. 9141. Now, one subtle thing you could do with being able to dial these routing codes beginning with zero was to get recordings from tiny little class 4 tandems in the network. Here, from the Yonkers Crossbar 5 in 1976, Ben gets the recording from the Culpeper, Virginia Crossbar 5 tandem by dialing 703003 and then a vacant code and one more digit. 003 is the routing code for the Culpeper tandem. You'll hear the crossbar 5 tandeming noise before the recording, which is done in that new Virginia standard voice. On this call, Yonkers uses a T-carrier trunk to get to its outgoing long-distance tandem. problem in completing your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator to help you. This is a recording. We're sorry, but we... If you've heard the Long Distance series, you know that voice was standardized in Virginia in 1975, and I thought the lady they had before had more personality. Here's the way Culpepper sounded before. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. Warwick, New York had a Stromberg ESC toll center, and for a long time it was possible to call the inward operator on 914-039-1211. This was especially significant since 
inward in Warwick did not go off hook, and therefore it was safe to dial it without worrying that it would make a strange-looking toll record. Here I try calling it in 1980 from Mamaroneck, and for some reason, instead of getting the operator, we get the Warwick recording. This is a recording from Warwick, New York. We cannot complete your call as dialed. Please consult your directory or dial 411 for directory assistance. This is a recording from Warwick, New York. We there were a number of codes beginning with 1 that were used for various points in the Caribbean that were not yet dialable with area code 809. Trinidad and Tobago was one of them, and for them, the code was 179. It could be used by itself in lieu of an area code, so operators who wanted to call Trinidad and Tobago would dial 179 plus the phone number. Now, if you picked up a line in Mamaroneck, New York, and dialed that, it wouldn't work because the 1 would be ignored and then the 7, 9 would be just the beginnings of some phone number beginning with 7, 9 and you would not get anything having to do with Trinidad and Tobago. However, Jacksonville, Florida was the gateway for Trinidad and Tobago and if you dialed its area code, 904 for Jacksonville and then 179 and then four more digits with the first three being vacant you could get the call to go through to the non-dialable Trinidad Tandem and get the recording there. Sorry, we are unable to connect your call as dialed. Please set the number and dial again. This is a recording from Trinidad. Connect your call as dialed. Please set the number and dial again. This is a recording from Trinidad. I'm sorry, we are unable to connect your call as dialed. Please set the number and dial again. This is a recording from Trinidad. Call to use the code 179 for Trinidad on that last call, I had to dial a regular area code first and then 179. Just dialing it at the dial tone wouldn't have done that. However, in the next presentation, I will show you a situation in Greenville, North Carolina, where you could just pick up a payphone and actually dial those 1XX codes, such as 179 for Trinidad, and it would work, subject to certain limitations. But anyway, that's in the next segment. Now let's go to somewhere that's quite different, not a crossbar system at all. And if you don't recognize where we are yet, here's another call. The number you have reached in Dale City, Virginia is not in service or has been changed. If you need assistance, please stay on the line and an operator will answer. This is a recording. Special operator, what number, darling? Special operator. This is the rather unique phone network developed by the Commonwealth Telephone Company in Prince William County, Virginia. It's Stromberg XY equipment, which has been senderized. It has a register sender that gives you dial tone and goes in between the subscriber and the 
XY switching train. So locally, it's very much like the Elizabeth City, North Carolina network, except it's Stromberg equipment, and it's not quite as sophisticated in the ability to dial and translate numbers and so forth. On that last call, I dropped the register sender out by rotary dialing 67, the first two digits of the local prefix 670. I actually had to flash it because this is a touchtone payphone. But anyway, after I dropped out the sender, I dialed a 2, again flashing it, and we got the local vacant level. Now from this payphone, here is how a 1 plus long distance call normally goes through. Had that number answered, the operator would have come back on the line and quickly told me what to deposit. The point is that the OnePlus calls do go through with operator assistance from this coin phone. Now, of course, since this is a senderized XY, you know the register sender dialed something to get the toll trunk and then MF'd the number I was calling. You didn't hear that, but you did hear the MFs of the number I was calling from with a zero prefixed and a funny start at the end. The question to investigate is, what is the register sender dialing to get that toll trunk that puts the call through with the operator on the line? Well, it might be on the one level of the first selector. So let's drop the register sender out by rotary dialing 67. That'll put us on the first selector with nothing dialed, so we'll then rotary dial a 1. And if it seems to go into a trunk, I will rotary dial the same number I called before, which was my panel line in New York City. Oh my, seems like I have just found the way to make long distance calls from this payphone in the way that long distance calls are normally made from a home phone. That is, it goes right through without an operator's assistance. This call went through a different way, and in this case the MFs you heard were not the number I was calling from, but instead the number I was calling. That's just because it's going through different equipment. This was recorded in August 1977, by the way. None of this works today, but back then, you could dial the first two digits of the local office code with a rotary dial, then a one, and then rotary dial the number, and it would go through from the payphone without the operator. Now, in this situation, I felt the need to be extremely sensitive to what it was I was dealing with here, because this is an access to the toll network, which does make a record of the call. Thus, this situation is very much like when a little old lady trusts you to use her phone. Well, are you going to dial long distance calls on it? Only the ones that don't complete. Certainly not any calls that do. In this case, the little old lady is Ma Bell, and if I were to complete some calls, leaving her with a bill and no one to send it to, well, she'd be very upset. The next time I came to this part of Virginia, she wouldn't let me use her phone again. I think you get the analogy. So out of a mixture of self-interest for wanting to keep this cool thing available 
Plus, a general sense that it's just plain rude to leave the phone company stuck with bills where they know somebody made a call and then they have to say, oh, who do we send the bill to? I made sure to dial things that were only free in the first place, or if they were charge services I hung up within the first two seconds, which was the same as a call not answering in the first place. Now, this probably won't work, but let's just make sure that the one and zero codes are restricted on this trunk. I'm going to do the same thing, rotary dial 67, then 1, and then area code 212, then 121, the code for the inward operator, and then four more digits. And I'm sure we'll get a reorder or something. Yikes, it worked. Well, I can't let New York Inward go off hook because, again, I don't want to make a toll record, but Warwick, New York, has an inward operator that does not go off hook, so we can let her answer. Warwick has a Stromberg ESC tandem, which then goes to a TSD, an NX1 system, to get to the inward operator. You'll actually hear the NX1 billing clicks that you may remember from the Greenville, North Carolina tapes, just before the inward operator begins to ring. So I'll be dialing 67 just to drop out the sender, then a 1, then area code 914, then 039, the routing code for Warwick, and then 121 for the inward operator, and then one more digit to just fill it out. When the operator releases, the trunk flashes, which is unlike most inward operators that simply go off hook when the operator's on the line and hang up when she leaves. At this point, I just flash my hook a few times, which actually sends a temporary on hook all the way down the line to Warwick, New York, and you can hear the trunk equipment responding. Now that is really cool. You can access the LD network, dial ones and zeros after area codes, and then you can even flash forward with the hook switch of the phone you're calling from. In Dale City, the phone company has the most sophisticated system available for outgoing long-distance calls from steps. It's called SATT, Stroger Automatic Toll Ticketing, and it makes it possible for long-distance calls to go out from a step without having to centralize the call recording process. So it doesn't have to go through camera. And one of the side benefits of it is that you can flash through to the outgoing trunk, and apparently you can dial ones and zeros after area codes, at least in this office, as long as you go directly into the SAT by dropping the register sender out and dialing a one. The next call is similar, except you don't get to hear the MFs this time, but we're dialing 604-059-3128.
This is one of the mysterious dial tones in the Vancouver Step Tandem. 604059 went to the Vancouver Step Tandem, and then there were certain codes, beginning with 2-1 and 3-1, that went to these. You could actually get more than one trunk onto one of these and talk through it. If you actually dialed something on the dial tone, it would behave as if you were calling from a four-row Twix line. That's teletypewriter service. We never really knew why they had these dial tones in the Vancouver Step on these levels. The 2111 conference was simply an unused one of these. You know, I had a dream once about being in this large industrial attic. It was fluorescent lit, and yet it was very eerie. There was a lot of strange-looking ductwork, and it had a lot of extra unused space. When I awoke, I realized that what I had just symbolically dreamed about was the Vancouver Step Tandem. What follows is a really good demonstration of dialing ones and zeros after area codes recorded by Ben. This was very strange because this was recorded from a number one crossbar office, which goes out on a crossbar tandem for its long distance CAMA gateway. And normally the CAMA tandems never allowed ones and zero codes to go through, but for some reason on the day after Christmas 1974, the 10th Avenue tandem did. Now, of course, that didn't last, but at least that day it was working. Now, normally, if you dialed an office code beginning with one or zero after a distant area code from this West Side Manhattan office, you would end up with this. I'm sorry. We are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. 21243. I'm sorry. But not today. 212850, December 26, 1974. He dialed 213-121 and four more digits and amazingly got the Los Angeles inward operator. Like most inwards, it went off hook, so he hung up right away, not wanting to make a strained toll record. Now he's going to dial a few more inwards on 214, 609, and 815. Those places were reached by dialing their area code plus 121. Rockford, Illinois is an unusual situation because the main switch for the 815 area is in Norway, Illinois, and in this case the inward is in Rockford. In most cases, the main inward operator and the main switch are in the same city. To reach the inward operator in a smaller place, you would dial the area code plus a three-digit routing code beginning with zero, then 121. Two examples follow. Culpeper, Virginia on 703 plus 003 plus 121 and another digit, and Granby, Quebec 514 plus 022 plus 121. 
and another digit. Call Papa. In the early 70s, if you asked for directory assistance through the operator, she would not dial 555-1212. Instead, she would dial the operator's route for the place you were calling, plus 131. Most of these went off hook, but Louisville 502 plus 131 didn't. for a, a Joseph Brown. Excuse me? Have a no, I don't. You might have a few. Have a few uh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. When the operator needed a rate or a route, she would call 141 in her local area. Most of the 141s went off hook, but Milwaukee's did not, and therefore Ben can safely dial 414 for Milwaukee, then 141 and four more digits, and ask for an operator's route. The place he asks about is Fisher's Island, New York, a small island that's close to the coast of Connecticut. Route 516788. Right. Route 203 plus, repeat 203 plus. Thank you. Can I help you? Hello, yes, operator's route 212742. Right. Route area plus, area plus. Thank you. You're Normally, the operator on 141 would just look up the information. Using the rate quote system was fairly rare in that case. The rate quote system was more often used by local operators, and the way they would do that is they would dial 009 and then wait for a tone and a flash and then key the second sequence, which might consist of the area code and office code and perhaps some other digits. Here, Ben dials 512009 and four more digits, and you can hear the Southwestern Bell RQS flashing with its tone. But Ben doesn't key anything, he just hangs up after a few seconds. was the code for the loop around test line at the tandem level. It did go off hook, so Ben here just calls 313-108, the one in Detroit, and hangs up once he gets the tone.
And speaking of tones, now Ben calls two of the international gateways. This is earlier, back when they were handled by four A's. So he's going to call Pittsburgh's by dialing 412-184 and four more digits, and then Jacksonville's on 904-185. During the tone, the system is waiting for the second sequence, which would consist of the country code, city code, and number to be keyed. I'm sorry, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. For one, two, one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording, 9042. I'm sorry. This next one requires no introduction. Hello. 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 This, of course, is the classic Vancouver 2111 conference, which, as usual, there's nobody on. You know, this thing managed to remain undialable through its entire existence. Originally, the code was 604 2111, and that would have been dialable except for the fact that back in 1970 and early 71, you could not dial a one or a zero as the middle digit of an office code. It wasn't until Los Angeles went to the new numbering scheme in 1973 that you were allowed to dial an area code plus an office code that had a one or a zero in the middle digit. By the time that was allowed, the Vancouver 4A had taken over and the step tandem was very hard to reach. To get it, you had to actually go to some other place in Canada and then MF over to Vancouver and then sort of use guard band to get onto the Vancouver step tandem. And in that period of time, it was really hard to get onto the conference. 
And then finally, the phone company opened up the code 059 to get to the Vancouver step office so that it was fairly easy to either MF it or dial it from one of the few phone lines that could do it. But it never really got back off the ground. It kind of fell out of use in that middle period there, and uh, I never heard anybody on it. We could use our imagination, however. Oh, good, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi. Is that William? No, it's Ben. Oh, good. Have you settled down again, have you? Have I done what? Settled down. From what? It's the side term paranoia. Side term paranoia? I never had any side term paranoia. Yeah? I'm sorry, Bill. I didn't put a one in front of it. First of all, it's bent. And anyway, it's usually better to put a zero in front of it. It certainly is. Hey, John and Ray? What? Yeah. This, is, this is Charlie. Uh, I'm going to drop. I'll, I'll be back in about three hours. That was an old edit that I did in the 1970s where I jokingly replaced Bill with Ben in order to put Ben onto 052. In fact, Ben was not on 052. Now, some of those guys were on 2111, but there aren't any tapes of it. Now, in what you've just been listening to, you see Ben and I making sure that none of these funny-looking numbers complete so as to make an odd-looking toll record because we didn't want to get the security departments all upset. But in what follows, recorded from Greenville, the toll access was unticketed, and so we didn't have to worry about that. In any case, what follows is a very high-quality recording of dialing the 1XX codes from the Greenville NX1 in a non-ticketing way, and uh, it's a great recording. The call to the Warwick, New York operator was edited. <laughs> 